So here I am at a church, dear viewers, that is almost as close to perfection as you are going to find anywhere. This is the church of All Saints at Salt Fleet B. Well, Salt Fleet B, the locals call it Solaby, All Saints Solaby. And you can see this church for quite a distance. All this land here in the Lincolnshire Marsh is very, very flat indeed. And suddenly the silhouette of the church appears on the horizon like a ship in full sail. It is a really rather majestic sight. Now you'll notice something particularly unusual about this church as we approach it from the south. And that is the tower, which has a considerable lean to it. 13th century base this tower with a 15th century top story. Hmm, they were pushing their luck with that one, weren't they? Um, the whole tower settled. Um, the um, um, clay below the surface here dried, it settled, and it's been settled in that position for hundreds of years. Some rather uh, doughty buttresses to keep the whole thing up. I love the uh, line and contour of the ridge of this wonderful lead roof of the nave here. So as we approach from the south, see it's a church of many periods, 13th, 14th, 15th century. There's even some evidence of Norman work inside which we might see as we look around. Windows of all periods, 13th and 15th century here. And we approach the south porch which is built of greenstone, limestone, brick. And above the doorway is a little inscription and a coat of arms of Thomas Grantham, who paid for this porch to be built at the end of the 15th century. It's a lovely little thing to see. So let's go in. Face to face with the 15th century door. Some traces of colour wash on that, which is nice. Brick flooring in the porch here. It's all very smart. And we come in. And again, a bit like South Summercoats, it's a 13th century church on the inside, 13th century arcades, but with later work. So let's just go to the west end. We're in the south aisle at the moment. There's only a one aisle here, one south arcade and a south aisle. There is no north aisle at all. The north wall is just filled with big 15th century windows. And let's look east. Comes a little bit dingy for a moment. But in a second, as I turn us round to look east, what a glorious sight. So that 13th century arcade, the South Isle, is almost as wide as the nave. We're in the nave currently. The nave has the most astonishing 15th century roof. There we go. There is a root screen, the bare bones of a root screen, and a parkless screen to the South Chapel. Ooh, bells. These bells, in fact, come from Skidbrook Church, which is a church about three miles from here that has been completely ruined by vandals, ghost hunters and people of that sort. So heading towards the east, And there is a really delightful mid to late 15th century rood screen. Lights have panel tracery on them. A little bit stripped bare of all its additional decoration. So originally there would have been cresting and fleurons and crockets. Some of that survives. It seems to survive better on this north side here than it does on the south side. 
there would of course have been coving and then there would have been the rood loft above none of that survives all of that is gone but at least we have the bare bones of this 15th century screen and in some parts of it there's quite a lot of colour it's beautiful beautiful red ochre and there's some blue paint and green paint on there by all accounts a bit of gilding you see a bit of gilding there you see where the base white has come through and likewise on the dado again no figurative work we're in lincolnshire we don't do that sort of figurative work but beautiful red paint and green paint still adhering to the dado um, the dado's had a bit of a tarting up you can see it's being grained with a sort of oak grain effect in some parts and it's only parts of the screen where the um, where the original colour remains presumably a, a pew has been built up here at some point or a reading desk yeah you can see a slot there where a piece of timber has been slotted in for a pew or, or the reading desk let's zoom in here some one lot of rather nice areas of gold leaf still adhering here and then we get that horrible graining that 19th century graining going on there and then into the south aisle and there is a par close screen of a similar sort of date again with remains of colour all over it slightly different design for the tracery here oh isn't that lovely really is a delight and that par close divides off this south chancel chapel which has no east window but a viridos niche a sort of niche into which i imagine was once placed Oh, step there a painted altarpiece or an alabaster altarpiece this appears to be very early 14th century if the canopy is anything to go by just rather a lovely feature sadly empty denuded of its original filling there's another strange opening on this side so perhaps there is a second panel in in this funny recess here a few of these around there's a couple of federal football saints if you look at one of my earlier videos of federal football saints which is just a couple of miles away from here there was a similar reredos slightly more elaborate but similar reredos niche there too and you've got a little 13th century arcade but reused in this 13th century arcade it's a lovely scalloped capital of the 12th century so there was a Norman church here prior to the construction of the present 13th and 14th century fabric. There's another little park close here. But actually, if I remember, am I correct here? I'm remembering this off the top of my head. I suspect I, I, I suspect that this park close here is in fact from elsewhere. I think it came from Minningsby Church um, and was brought here when Minningsby Church became redundant. You see these little uh, coloured uh, parklets, and I think it might well have been the rude screen of Minningsby Church. But that's very nice to see. Chancel, unfortunately, has been rather over restored in the 19th century there's still a piscina on that side the sill of the window has been lowered to create a sedilia they're looking west on the back of the rude screen but also up into this fantastic structure of this nave roof which is also 15th century now as we pass back into the nave, we pass over a very large Purbeck marble coffin lid 
Is it in its original position? It may well be. Perhaps there's a rector of the church buried underneath it. It would be the place that they would, um, generally speaking, be buried. There is another incise slab here. Um, I can read Hick Chasset. Here lies Corpus, the body of Margo, Margaret, yes. Quad, quas quondam. Uxis, Uxoris, the wife of, the sometime wife of Robert. Of uh, Robert, and then that's, oh, indecipherable. That's a bit of a pain. Anyway, the rest seems to be um, indecipherable. Um, Propitiate Deus at the end there, on whose soul may God have mercy, etc., etc. The usual formulaic sort of stuff that you get on 15th century brasses and incised slabs. So looking into the south aisle and the arcade, west towards the tower. So a 13th century tower arch. Oh, a few box pews. A very grand classical pulpit, which if I remember comes from a Cambridge college, but I cannot remember off the top of my head precisely which one it came from. Um, stiff leaf, typical 13th century, early 13th century work for the chancel arch. The yeah, lancet windows. What can we see up there? Oh gosh, you can see right up. So if I put the camera right up, you can see right up into the top of the tower and you can see the bell hanging, at least one bell hanging in the bell frame and the clapper of it. So that's fun to see. Let's see if we can zoom in for you. Can you see there? The bell with its clapper. Oh, interesting looking ladder. Not one I'd want to climb, thank you very much. Yeah, a couple of 13th century lances, so the whole bottom stage of the tower is 13th century, only the top stage is 15th century. And moving into the west end of the south aisle, and we have the font. Well, I say we have the font, in fact we have two fonts here. The present bowl of the font, it's a rather battered thing, is a 13th century bowl. And that appears to have been replaced at some point by a 15th century font, the bowl of which has now been reversed to form the base. So we have two font bowls here. And this 15th century one has fantastic faces around the bottom of the bowl. And ordinarily you couldn't see these because they'd be on the bottom. Difficult to see, but because the bowl, this 15th century bowl has been reversed, you can now see these wonderful faces with their tongues sticking out. So very unusual indeed. I don't know when that occurred, but at some point they have discovered the earlier font bowl somewhere lurking around, perhaps underneath the 15th century font and they have made the decision to turn over the 15th century font bowl, use that as a base, and reinstate the 13th century font. Very interesting indeed. So all the way along here, we have the original 15th century roof of this wide south aisle. It's quite a span for such a roof. So I will leave you with a view looking east again towards the reed screen and the parklay screen of the South Chapel. And this is All Saints Church in Saltfleetby, or if you're a Lincolnshire-born person, All Saints Church in Solaby. Thanks very much indeed. Bye for now.